Coming up on Ag Week TV, EPA disappoints the biofuels industry with its RFS volume proposal. Livestock development, trade, and the next generation of farmers were all hot topics here at the South Dakota Governor's Ag Summit. And Anheuser-Busch is looking for organic barley growers for its new beer. Welcome to Ag Week TV. I'm Michelle Rook. A new soybean processing facility was dedicated this week in Aberdeen, South Dakota. The $300 million plant is the 10th plant built by AGP and the largest investment in the history of the Omaha, Nebraska-based cooperative. The plant will crush 50 to 60 million bushels of soybeans annually into soybean meal, soy hulls and pellets, and crude soybean oil. That will provide new export opportunities in the Pacific Rim to make up for the lost market share to China, which takes whole beans. So the timing is perfect. That opportunity then is to load a significant amount of the meal on unit trains that will move from Aberdeen, South Dakota to Aberdeen, Washington, be loaded on vessels that are hitting the Pacific Rim. We're talking the Philippines, Vietnam, Malaysia, all the Indonesia countries all around there. The plant will also improve soybean prices in the area and promote food and national security. Well, nobody knows for sure exactly what the basis level you know, improvement will be, you know, obviously it should be a, an improvement over what it was and it just depends what, you know, the competition, you know, between other facilities drives. Agriculture ensures that we remain a strong uh, country. We should grow our own food in this country. We should grow our own fuel in this country. Entities like this allow that to happen. The soy plant will provide a significant economic impact to the region and is likely to spur livestock development in northeast South Dakota. The next generation of agriculture is not lacking on enthusiasm or passion for the industry, despite some of the headwinds. That was obvious from the group of young people South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem invited to join her for a panel discussion on the next generation of agriculture at the South Dakota Governor's Ag Summit in Sioux Falls. Creating opportunities in agriculture for young people is part of Governor Kristi Noem's agriculture agenda, and it's being fostered by the Department of Ag. With the average age of the South Dakota farmer around that 57 years of age, we need to be thinking about that and the impact that that's going to have and, and the things that give them the tools that they need to, to be able to continue on. Logan Walter told the governor the biggest challenge is her land and capital, so he suggests an incentive program for retiring farmers to transition their land. You know, they see... For instance, the neighbor kid that's been working or helping him out his whole life, you know, give him a chance. John Eilertson says the state could also facilitate a mentoring program. I've been able to overcome some of my challenges within the agriculture industry in terms of uh, having someone to look, for, look up to and having a mentor. And I think that's something that the state could look at. Kelly Williams runs a cattle operation part-time with her husband, but says they want to be full-time. But unfortunately, we both have to have full-time jobs in order to financially support that lifestyle of living, uh, not only between uh, the loans to secure that place, but also the health insurance. One positive the group agreed on was that 4-H and FFA were key in launching their careers in agriculture and need additional support. One of the other challenges and disappointments expressed by the panelists was the attacks on agriculture by the public, especially on social media. The Environmental Protection Agency has released their proposal for the mandated biofuels volumes for 2020 and 2021 under the Renewable Fuels Standard. The biofuels industry was once again disappointed with the agency's draft as they left most volumes static with 2019. Advanced biofuels, such as biomass-based diesel, remained at 2.43 billion gallons, which is below what the industry is currently producing and what they asked for. We got a capacity of over 3 billion gallons right now, so we, we'd like to utilize a lot more of that capacity. We got room to grow. We got soybeans in the bin that, that uh, we got almost a billion uh, bushels of soybeans in storage right now. We'd love to get hold of that oil and turn it into biodiesel. Barry says they will continue to push EPA to increase the volumes in the final rule because biodiesel lowers greenhouse gas emissions and is good for the environment. This week's crop stop takes us to Mott in the southwest corner of North Dakota. The area has traditionally struggled with drought, but this year they're getting a little relief. Farmer and rancher Nathan Thomas says some recent rains are helping their crops, which got off to a late start after a long winter and cold spring. Uh, I know some guys got late because of the moisture and that kind of stuff, so some of the younger wheat 
you know, isn't as nice. Uh, and like, personally, our soybeans, they're like really slow. Last year at this time, they were blooming and they're not even can fully canopied yet this year. So they got, they got a ways to go, but they kind of need some heat yet. But flowers look good, corn looks good, canola, people, some canola is fully flowering right now. It looks, looks good. I, I'm very happy. And Thomas says their pastures look as good as anyone can remember. He says they sell graze their cattle and normally move a group after 14 days, but the grass lasted 24 days. Anheuser-Busch is giving some of their barley growers the chance to transition to organic for its new organic beer. Michelob Ultra Pure Gold is the first USDA certified organic beer. It was introduced last year and the company says it's so successful they're offering their growers help transitioning to organic. Right now it's in a pilot program in Idaho, but the company's director of U.S. agronomy says the contract for change program will help any of their growers in North Dakota and Minnesota through the three-year process of certifying organic. It also guarantees them a market at the end of the process. We see interest across the board, right? It's a market opportunity. It's a value addition opportunity, and that's something that growers want to know about and figure out if it can work for their operation. Newman outlined the program for area growers at the recent Anheuser-Busch Grower Days in Moorhead. Cover crops are big this year with the significant prevented plant acres, but even before this season, more farmers were using them for soil health advantages. Ahead on Ag Week TV, we'll talk with NDSU soil health specialist Abby Wick about the jump in cover crops around the region. Add more bushels to your hopper and money to your pocket by harnessing the power of air with Crary Wind Systems. Whether your beans are chest high or barely off the ground, Crary offers two solutions that add a constant stream of high velocity air to quickly feed crop back to the auger, eliminating bunching, reducing shatter loss, and increasing your ground speed. Don't let crop conditions dictate your yield. Check out the Crary Air Reel or Crary Wind System today. Dakota Fest is back August 20th through the 22nd in Mitchell, South Dakota. Dakota Fest exists to provide you the tools to grow your family farm operation. Network with over 500 exhibitors specialized in row crop and livestock farming. Attend ag education sessions and experience live equipment demos you can only see in person. Don't forget to bring the family for great food and fun kid events as well. Join Dakota Fest this year August 20th through the 22nd. For more information and discounted tickets, visit dakotafest.com. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley source for Batco. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley Batco dealer. Mother Nature doesn't always cooperate, so when conditions are right, be ready with genuine Case IH parts from Titan Machinery. Only genuine Case IH parts are engineered to keep your equipment running at peak efficiency when you're running around the clock. Don't risk your bottom line with off-brand parts that don't meet the same standards. Visit your local Titan Machinery dealership today to find out why genuine Case IH parts offer the best value and performance for your operation. With the success of the Case IH Diger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. But only Case IH offers a five axle design to give you a smoother ride, more power to the ground, with less firming and compaction. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. The Ag Week Soil Health Minute is sponsored by the North Dakota Corn Council and the North Dakota Soybean Council. Over the last few years, we've seen increasing interest in cover crops in the region. And here with our first Soil Health Minute of the year is Abby Wick. And Abby, first of all, I want to talk about cover crops. They have exploded in acreage this year because of the prevented plant situation. Talk about the benefits for using cover crops on those acres first. Uh, you know, I think getting something growing on prevent plant is the key. Um, so if we don't have the cash crop grow cash crop growing, we need to get a cover crop growing. Um, so not only will we get some weed competition and, and keeping those some of those resistant weeds at, at bay, um, but we'll also build the soil structure, we'll prep that land for next year's crop and, and get some of the water usage that we need. 
And the PP acres actually kind of serve as a launching board for getting cover crops on an operation sometimes, don't they? They do. That's what we've seen in the past. There was, I think, one of the first years I was at NDSU, we saw a lot of PP acres and several farmers put in a full season cover crop. And what they did all year is that they watched that cover crop and they saw how it performed and they looked at the radish roots and they looked at the rye roots and they figured out what they liked best in that mix. And then the following year, they applied a lot of those cover crops to acres, whether they were interseeding corn or following wheat with a cover crop. And it was, it was, just, it was a really nice launching pad for, for using cover crops on a farm. But even before this year, we have had a nice increase in acres, a nice trend in this region, haven't we? We have. I've been really proud of our farmers here because they've they've taken these ideas that they're reading about in magazines um, and, and applied them to their farms. They're coming to our extension events. They're watching the Soil Health Minute. Um, so there's been a lot of really good advances in use of cover crops. And Abby, this is the third year of the partnership with the Soil Health Minute. And what can we expect that might be a little different this season? Well, in the past, we've done early season. So I've been out there in the spring and, in, and during the summer and mainly talking about uh, interseeding cover crops and things like that. But now we're later in the season, so I hope we can capture some of the cover crops after wheat. Um, maybe we'll look at some of these full season cover crops on PP ground and, and see how it's changing the soil. Um, and then we have all this amazing research and work that's being done on our, our research extension centers and across the state by our farmers. So hopefully we can capture some of those things that are being done as well. Yeah, how much do you think the partnership has helped actually even increase acreage more and interest more in soil health? I think it's helping a ton. I've actually gotten several letters from farmers across the state, um, how they watch this at the, the TV segment, they read the, the magazine articles. Um, and I think they're, whether you're in the valley where we focus a lot of our work, you know, in this eastern part of the state, or you're out west, um, I think farmers are picking up tips from this and getting ideas for what they can do on their farms and ranches. Abby, thanks for joining us. We look forward to all your Soil Health Minutes coming up. And again, you can catch those on Ag Week magazine or at Ag Week TV. Scientists at the Carrington Research Extension Center had the chance to show off their work this week at the 60th Annual Field Day. Plant pathologist Michael Wunsch shared his work on reducing root rot in peas and lentils. He says researchers noticed the most important factor in the severity of root rot appears to be when the crops are planted. Earlier planting means higher yields, but by moving planting to late April, producers can cut root rot without any extra costs. Events like this give researchers the chance to share information directly with producers. Ahead on Ag Week TV, a look at what happens to North Dakota soybeans after they leave the field as we continue our planting to processing series. And later we'll talk to the chairman of the United Soybean Board in studio. How can one tillage tool handle most field conditions, residue types and tillage practices? It takes a renegade. The Summers VRT Renegade. Switch from vertical to aggressive tillage and anywhere in between. Adjust blade angles, tillage depth, and more on the go. All from an iPad. Get the tillage results you want, like only the Summers VRT Renegade can. For more information or a demo, contact your Summers dealer. At Superior Grain Equipment, we're committed to quality and service, offering you the best in grain storage and dryers for any size operation. Our experts will work with you to determine the most efficient and economical storage solution for your needs. We help protect your bottom line and your future with the industry's best bins and warranties. Make the superior choice for protection today and tomorrow with Superior Grain Equipment. Luckin Trucks and Parts sells quality used parts for all makes and models. With over 50 acres of trucks and parts and new inventory arriving daily. Family owned and operated since 1966, Luckin's specializes in the sale of quality used medium to heavy duty truck parts as well as pre-owned trucks, trailers, and construction equipment. If it's on a truck, we got it. Call us today and let us get you your part. When the water's high and your yields are low Cause your fields have no place for water to flow Just one call takes care of it all Call on Field Drainage Incorporated Call on Field Drainage Incorporated Call on Field Drainage 
the perfect time to get ready for harvest, and North Star Ag has the equipment you need to keep things running smoothly this season. We have a great selection of augers from Meridian and Wheatheart, as well as Batco and Unitube conveyors. Uptime is crucial. Keep your crew in the field longer with a fuel trailer from Thunder Creek. And don't forget, North Star Ag has Meridian hopper bins for any size operation. See our complete new and used equipment inventory at northstarag.com or give us a call. Soybeans are North Dakota's top crop. More than 6 million acres are grown each year with a value of more than $2 billion. Between 70 to 90 percent of the state's soybean crop is sold to China and other Asian countries, and the rest is put to good use here in the U.S. Rose Dunn shows us where North Dakota soybeans go in this installment of our Planting to Processing series. Traditionally, North Dakota soybeans leave the Pacific Northwest as whole beans, heading for China and other Asian countries, where they're crushed and used as feed for swine, poultry, and aquaculture. But with the current loss of the China market, growers are looking at other ways to market soybeans. Joe Morkin, the current chair of the North Dakota Soybean Council, is hoping a crushing plant being considered in Spiritwood, North Dakota, goes forward. It would be huge. You hate to have all your all your eggs in one basket, right? And so by having a crush facility in the state, it would allow us uh, a different avenue with our beans. Crushing produces soybean meal used for animal feed and oil used for cooking or renewable fuel. We try to use it on the farm. Uh, we'd like more truckers to use it. But right now the big players are the coasts. And then the heating fuel industry in New York, uh, the state of New York, is, is a big game changer over there. In fact, Morgan says the state of New York is working toward being 100% biofuel for home heating. And soybean meal is an important feed for livestock producers. Soybean meal is an extremely good feed resource for all species of animal egg. It's high protein, it's very palatable, so the animals really take to it. They utilize our manure to grow their soybeans, which then end up feeding our animals. So it's a, in all ways, soybean is very useful to us. The North Dakota Soybean Council works to promote soybeans and find new uses and markets for them to help withstand any turbulence in international trade. You know, there's all sorts of research being done in the world of paints and plastics, uh, polymers, and, and things like that. Sinner says North Dakota soybeans are in high demand around the world because they're known for their high quality. Year after year, they get good, clean beans that then translates to a good, clean product. This is Rose Dunn for Ag Week. You can read much more in the next Ag Week magazine or on agweek.com. After a hot week, it looks like a favorable extended forecast for crop development. Here's John with our AgriWeather Outlook. Weather portion of Ag Week. Some of this is going to be a repeat of what you heard last week because it didn't happen. But I think it finally will this week. In fact, I'm fairly confident we're looking for a significant cool down this week throughout the Great Plains and Upper Midwest. The weather becoming significantly less humid and a lot less rainy. A definite break in the warm, humid and stormy pattern that's been hanging around the Upper Midwest Northern Plains, especially for the last three or four weeks. Jet stream is ridging up in the west. Finally starting to see a little troughing in the east. Not like in wintertime, but it's definitely going to be enough. Now, obviously, we're starting off with some mild weather hanging around, and there will be an extension of hot weather, relatively hot, as in near 100, climbing up in through the central plain states this week, and the lower elevations of the Rocky Mountains are going to have a lot of hot weather as well. But the east will definitely be cooling down, and we're not going to have the real searing heat, plus the warmest days this week throughout the northern plains and Midwest are going to be a lot less humid than the weather has been lately. Moving ahead into the second week, you're going to see the jet stream flipping a little bit. And again, the heat going on, on uh, in retreat, especially in the Corn Belt, the eastern part of the country. It's just not going to be particularly hot at all. The grandest, most significant outcome of this pattern change, though, will be a large region of relatively dry weather. Maybe not completely rain-free, but much freer from rain than it has been in a long time. The Great Lakes, Northern Plains, Corn Belt. There will be some scattered mountain storms and desert storms in the southwest. The Gulf Coast, a lot of tropical moisture and a lot of that kind of weather. The second week, which segues into August, will again be a lot less rainy throughout the northern plains, upper Midwest, and Corn Belt with the stormy weather, whatever there is, being mostly down along the Gulf Coast and out in the western part of the country.
For over 40 years, Northside Implement has been your Gallon Vermeer dealer in Webster, South Dakota and Lidgerwood, North Dakota. With new equipment including feeding, grain handling, haying and skid steer, as well as a nice selection of used equipment including sprayers, spreaders, seeding, as well as tractors and loaders. Northside Implement stands behind the equipment they sell with quality service guaranteed. See us for all your repairs and parts from tillage to skid steer loaders to combines and everything in between. Contact Dave, Liddell, Mike or Chris today at Northside Implement or visit our website for our complete equipment listings. Steffes Group, selling land and the equipment to farm it since 1960. If you're interested in selling or have questions about our auction process, head to our website at steffesgroup.com to contact us at any one of our four locations located throughout the Midwest. You can also visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel to view all of our auction previews and recaps to stay up to date on the market in your area. With the all-new Green Fit system from Reichhardt, plug and play is finally a reality when using John Deere AutoTrack guidance with existing new products like the Challenger 1000 series or all-new C-Series Rogators from Butler Machinery. Green Fit is an authorized navigation interface that utilizes existing John Deere AutoTrack guidance systems to steer most Challenger tractors and sprayers. Green Fit eliminates the worry of learning and converting to a new steering system when buying an industry-leading Challenger from Butler Machinery. Learn more about Green Fit at butlermachinery.com slash greenfit. DTE is your headquarters for flatbeds and service bodies for your truck. Whether you need to haul bales, heavy commercial equipment, or take every tool with you, DTE has the truck equipment you need. We have over 200 units on hand or will custom build a flatbed or service body on your truck. Like this Dewey's bale bed with dual lift cylinder arms. Lift, load, and handle your bales with ease. When you need help at the farm, your business, or in the oil patch, count on DTE. DTE, let us build a truck for you. Martinson Ag Risk Management offers a variety of crop marketing and crop insurance packages to our customers. With over 40 years of experience, our dedicated staff works hard to ensure you get the best advice on crop insurance, marketing, and risk management. Contact Randy or any of the staff at Martinson Ag Risk Management today at 701-205-4200 or visit us online at martinsonag.com. Welcome back. The United Soybean Board held their annual meeting in North Dakota this week. Here to visit about that is USB Chair Keith Tapp. Keith, first time you've ever held this meeting in North Dakota. It is. It's been a great venue. That We enjoy being here. Good to see this part of the country. Now, the last couple of years, you guys have kind of changed your priorities. And one of the things that you're working on is preference for U.S. soy, which is so important right now with China out of the market and you looking at different markets, right? That is correct, and we have a quality bean. We know we do. We've got uh, great meal content. We've got you know amino acids that other countries want, and uh, we know that we have got to find other markets. We had already uh, began pursuing that, but going into some of the basic markets, and we're getting our foot in the door there. And uh, feel real good that you know we've got some positive things coming down the pike. It's just a bleak time right now, so we got to keep our chins up. So what are you doing to, you know, get that in motion, to get those new markets? What are you working on? Well, we work with uh, USAC, United States Soybean Export Council. We, we develop a bean, we develop the product, and we work with, with them and, as well as ASA uh, to get that uh, market share out there, to open up markets abroad especially. We have some of the domestic markets that we're expanding, uh, new uses and things like that as well. But as far as actually moving the bean or the meal or the oil, uh, we look for help through uh, USAC to help us get into those markets uh, overseas. And Keith, sustainability is another one of USB's priorities. So how are you using that message to build preference for U.S. soy? Well, when we speak to our customers, we we, we have that proven. We have a, a soy sustainability protocol that we have uh, documented. They know that we have the infrastructure to get our beans to market and onto them. And uh, not only that, we have proven that we have the quality bean. We grow that year after year with uh, you know the protein, the amino acids, and the content that's involved in that that has carried on and helped us to remain sustainable. Well, thanks so much, uh, USB Chair Keith Tapp. Still ahead on Ag Week TV, we'll take you along for the ride as some very old tractors take to the country.
Dakota Fest is back August 20th through the 22nd in Mitchell, South Dakota. Dakota Fest exists to provide you the tools to grow your family farm operation. Network with over 500 exhibitors specialized in row crop and livestock farming. Attend ag education sessions and experience live equipment demos you can only see in person. Don't forget to bring the family for great food and fun kid events as well. Join Dakota Fest this year August 20th through the 22nd. For more information and discounted tickets, visit dakotafest.com. This is Dennis Belisky reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. With the success of the Case IH Diger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. But only Case IH offers a five axle design to give you a smoother ride, more power to the ground, with less burning and compaction. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. Ag Week is excited to bring you the Ag Week app with useful features and the latest news and information right at your fingertips. Get your Ag Week news, weather, and the latest episodes of Ag Week TV. Plus, see real time information on the futures market and view local cash bids for your crops. Stay updated and take Ag Week with you wherever you are. Download the Ag Week app today. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? Ag Week Magazine. Reaching over 70,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. Ag Week provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. Ag Week. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. Tractor enthusiasts converged in Yankton, South Dakota again this year for the 13th annual Tri-State Old Iron Association Tractor Ride. Nearly 200 tractors and riders spent a day in southeastern South Dakota and a day in northeast Nebraska. Participants came from as far away as New York, California, and Louisiana. Organizers say the event is sold out every year because people want to preserve the history of farming and tractors. I'd say it's a friendship and show off their tractor that they their dad had or their grandpa had and they restore it and it's just awesome. The ride features many different makes and models of tractors including this rare Dutz tractor from Germany and this high crop John Deere. Becker says participants enjoy the fellowship, seeing the countryside and checking out the crops. The Ag Education Center is a popular spot for families at the Red River Valley Fair in Fargo and members of the Ag Week team had a chance to help teach kids about ag. The 16,000 square foot facility is designed to educate fairgoers about our region's livestock and commodities. The theme of farm to fork was highly visual and demonstrated how animals and crops go from the field to your table. Some of the most popular exhibits were live animals, including poultry being hatched and learning how to milk a cow. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or download the Ag Week app. Be sure to follow us as well on Facebook and Twitter. We'll see you next week.